Now, you may remember that we both watch far too many old films, uh, usually to play our favourite game, Spot the Stiff. Uh, you know, um, <laughs> in a war film, for example, if a character says, When this war's over, I'm going to marry that girl of mine. <laughs> Dead, Dead, you see? <laughs> Dead. However, you must always bear in mind that in films, the American stars are much more likely to survive than the British ones. Now, in The Great Escape, for example, Charles Bronson... ..makes it to a boat. James Coburn... ..makes it to Spain. Steve McQueen... ..falls off his motorbike, but otherwise he's fine. However, <laughs> Richard Attenborough... Dead. Dead. Dead, you see? <laughs> Gordon Jackson... Dead. Dead. What does he do with that? And, of course, Donald Pleasance, the forger... Let me come with you. <laughs> I can see, I can see perfectly. <laughs> On television, of course, the best programme for this game is Casualty. Why pay some cowboy when I can repair the chimney myself? <laughs> it's not just war films, however. There are plenty of other types of films which are equally good for this past... Yeah! Horror films are full of it. On being told that the ground that they are about to dig up is sacred, the hard-headed property developer says... A few old peasant superstitions can't get in the way of progress. The bulldozers move in tomorrow. Dead. It's <laughs> a horror film. Dead in an interesting way. Yes, this bloke is due to be torn to pieces by zombies in about five minutes. These two have just heard strange noises in the middle of the night. OK, darling. If you're worried, I'll go outside and check. It's only the wind. <laughs> Horribly mutilated by an unknown creature. And why has he gone outside? Because all humans in horror films are incredibly stupid. <laughs> the only person who always susses it is the dog. The dog always senses evil. I say, what's the matter, Biffer, old boy? I'll dust you out. Dead. Dead, dead dog. Dog, dead. Woof, 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 woof. Ooh! Shh! <laughs> <laughs> the dog never dies in these films. The Hound of Hell. Fortunately, not a common breed. <laughs> so down to the finalists in this year's Working Dogs competition. We're down to just four. Montmorency Pride, a wonderful Hungarian Pooley. <laughs> Arbuthnot Marmalade III, Welsh Terrier. <laughs> Hell's Behemoth Belial, Hellhound. <laughs> and of course, Peregrine Pickle, the marvellous Yorkshire Terrier who's delighted us so much this week. There is one character, however, you will always seem to find in a horror film. Let's just call him the Mad Priest. <laughs> um, the job of the Mad Priest in a horror film is that every few minutes he... <laughs> every few minutes he will appear and he will then utter terrifying warnings of doom. Do not enter. Ignore the warnings at your peril. Like that. Now, if they want to make the warnings even madder and even spookier, they will have him make them in Latin. What is that inscription there over the gateway? Dominus adestain partis nomen. Horribilis terrorum nonquam filios. And what does it mean? Please keep to the path. No flesh at all. <laughs> The mad priest is unlike any real-life priest you're ever likely to meet. You can tell he's mad because he never says things like, The christening will be at three o'clock on Sunday. Or, The next hymn is number 44 in your hymn books. No. The mad priest says things like, According to the third scroll of the Kabbalah of Behemoth, three moons ago, in the desert, to the west of the ancient monastery of St. Catherine, within the scriptorium of the acolytes of Kyo, there was a confluence of the forces of evil on a scale unimaginable to humankind. <laughs> the next hymn is number 44. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from 
and Mad Priests, horror films also rely heavily on children. Loads of films have horrible children. Um, the Omen, uh, Carrie, Village of the Damned, The Shining. Home Alone 2. <laughs> Well, darling, that's because of my washing up liquid. 